Hello. It is a great day to be to the office. I am your office worker and I'm here to help. Today we're going to talk about columns and we're going to talk about sorting. So let's get started. This is very exciting because you can use columns for all different things and sorting in different ways. So columns, I'll show you a few different things you can do here. One, you might have a paragraph that maybe you want to make into columns, like in a newsletter, or maybe just like how columns look. Okay, so I already have a paragraph here. You don't have to start with a paragraph. You can um, set up your columns before you start typing. I'll show you that one in just a minute. But first, if you have the paragraph already, or you wanted to type it as a paragraph first and then transform it into columns, super easy. Here's my paragraph. I'm going to select my paragraph. I'm going to come up to my layout and right here it says columns. Now under columns you have a few different options. You have one, two, or three columns and there's more columns. Okay, If you already know how many columns you want, uh, one, two, or three, you can pick one of these options. I like to go into more columns because it gives me a few more options. Okay, so once again, we have one, two, and three. Um, these two, you have a left so that there's a skinny side on the left and a right, which has a skinny side on the right side. So it splits it in half in the two columns, but it's kind of like an uneven. Um, maybe you have like a, a vocabulary or something. You might want to put the words here and the definitions on this side. I don't know. However you want to do it. Um, I like to do columns evenly. So I would pick maybe um, three columns. It's going to show me a nice little example right here. Here's my three columns. Now down here, and, and here's another place you can put your number of columns. You can put as many columns as you like. <laughs> um, I'm going to do three. Line between, I can have a line in between each column if I want to split it up that way. Might make it easier to read. You can choose what your width will be. If you want it to be equal for each width, you leave this checked, equal column width. Okay, so I'm going to make it a nice rounded number. Two, the spacing has to do with how much space is in between each column. The width has to do with how wide the column is. Okay, and then selected text, yes, that's what I want. I don't want it for the whole document. I have other things on here. I don't want to make any columns. Um, so selected text is good. I'm now going to say OK. And there are my three columns with my lines in between. Okay. If you look at your ruler, you will see that it is two inches for each one. Okay. And then there's that little bit of space in between where they also put the line. I'm going to turn this off so you can see it clearly. I have my show hide uh, button on so that you can see all the non-printing characters, things like where there's breaks or paragraph marks. Whenever you hit your enter key or if you hit a tab key, you'd see arrows, all the little dots in between. Those are your spaces. I'm going to turn that off so you can see a little bit better. Better. This is what it looks like nice and clean. Okay. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Wow. Lovely. Okay. I wonder how many of you saw that before I did. Hmm. Um, <laughs> leave a comment and let me know. <laughs> okay. So that's one way to do columns. Now you can, like I was saying, you can, um, type it first, or I'm sorry, you can set it up columns first. I typed it first here. You can set up your columns first. Let me make sure I'm in the right spot. Uh, yeah, I believe I'm good. Okay, you can come into your layout, down to your columns. See, I'm back to one column because I'm in a different section here. And I can set it up to be two columns. I can start typing. Here I have an example of Columns. See how it just keeps going? I will. See, I'm going to have two columns. If you look at my ruler, you can see there's here's one column, and then there's a space, and then there's another column. Um, it's, so it should jump to the next line in just a minute. I will be attempting, there it goes, to make two columns at some point. I will need to put in a uh, column break. Let's 
let's see. Now, if I wanted to, and this is a tiny little paragraph, but if I wanted to put a break in right here, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go to my breaks right next to columns, and I want to do a column break. So it's going to take the text that's after my insertion point, and it's going to put it into the next column. So I have a little, <laughs> I have a little control over where my break is. Well, that's fine. That's because there's enter marks here. There we go. Okay. So, I mean, of course, you probably wouldn't do that for such a small amount of text, but you probably have more text there, like I do up here, and you would just insert your column break wherever it is you want it to be. Or if you have that much text, you would just keep on typing. And when you hit the bottom of the page, it should then jump up to the top here to the second column. Okay. Now, sometimes you have a list. Here's my grocery list. Not really, but I threw some things on here. I have my list and I might want to make columns out of it. Okay. So I'm going to again, select my list, come up to layout, go to columns, we're going to make two columns out of it. There we go. Now another reason, another time you would use your break is if maybe you did something like this and it was really kind of a little bit uneven. Maybe you want that break to be in a different spot. So you can insert a column break in a different place and it will rearrange things for you. Now, of course, you wouldn't do what I just did because that looks silly. But you see what I'm saying is you can insert your break in a different place and it just kind of shifts things for you. Okay. This little arrow I keep clicking up here, that's my undo button, in case you don't know. That will be your best friend, trust me. All right, so that is columns. Oh, another thing I was going to show you was sorting. So if I want to sort my list, I'm not sure why you'd sort a grocery list, but hey, let's just have fun. I'm going to come back home. I'm going to go all the way to this middle section here, and you'll see A, Z with a down arrow. That is your sort button. If you click that, it brings up your sort text dialog box, okay? And it's going to ask you, what do you want to sort it by? When you have a list like this, you kind of only have one choice, paragraphs. Field one, it really isn't anything. So paragraphs is what you want, because what they're talking about is every time I hit the enter mark, that creates a new paragraph. Even though it doesn't look like a full-blown paragraph, it's still considered a paragraph. It is text, it's not numbers or anything, it's text. And we're gonna do ascending order, so from A to Z. Descending would be from Z to A. Now down here, my list has no header row, or it has a header row. A header row would be like if it had uh, like a heading at the top of it. We don't have that, so it's no header row. I'm gonna say, okay. It, whoop, I got rid of my columns, that's okay. It sorted it. We can still put our columns back in. There it goes. It started it from A to Z. Now I don't have anything from A, so it started with B all the way down to Z. Okay, that would be sorting for a list. Maybe you have a table. Maybe you have a table that you can't read. Oh, it's just going to be all funky on me here. Okay. Um, so you have a table, there we go, I can see a little better now, and what I did was I just threw some student names in, they're not really my student names, but I threw a bunch of names in there, and I have math grades, English grades, history grades, and science grades. Now, you might want to sort this, maybe you want to really see um, the math grades, okay, so I'm going to select my whole table. Now, this little plus sign right here is one way to select an entire table. If I click it, it selects everything in one shot. You could also just select it all like you normally would, just click and uh, drag. But I like to click this so I know I got everything. Then, go back home again. Go back to your sorting. Now this time it's going to look a little different. The sort by has something different in it. It's going to have all the things we have at the top here, all of our headings. And we talked about headers. So we have the student name, math, English, history, and science. Now we talked about doing math, so we're going to click math. That is, in fact, numbers. Okay, It's not text, it's not dates, it's numbers. 
we're going to do ascending. Now, in numbers, it's going to be from 1 to, you know, lowest to highest. From our descending is highest to lowest. Okay. You could have more than one sort. We're not going to do that because it doesn't really work well with this kind of table. But you could do um, sorting within a sort within a sort. Down here, you want to make sure that you're telling it that you have a header row. That is this. Okay. Now, <laughs> the reason you want to say that is because if you say no header row, it's going to include that in the sort, which is going to look really weird. So you have to tell it header row. Say OK. And now all the math grades go from lowest all the way to highest. Okay. Do that again. So you highlight everything, clicking on this little plus sign. Sort. Maybe this time you want to see the history scores. Maybe this time you want to go from highest to lowest. Say OK. And history is from highest all the way down to the lowest. So our lowest grade by Kate, she got a 75. Okay. And that, that is the exciting world of columns and sorting. Please leave a comment below with what you would like to see me work on next. Click that like button if you like this and uh, hope to see you again soon. Please subscribe so you know when you're going to get to see another video from me. Thanks. See you later.